saying that based on early assessments, quote, we believe that more than 50% of our development process will be positively affected by AI. What is up, everybody? It is Jake back with the MF Film Room. Thank you so much for being here. If you guys want to be up to date on all things EA College Football, hit that red subscribe button. Do it. I'm telling you guys, you're going to be back. I'm going to be making quality content. I'm going to be making it on everything from news, analysis, how-tos, everything like that. Hit that red subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. Also, hit the like button, too, and follow me on Twitter, slash X. That fam is growing. If you like college football content, go to my other channel, Master Football with Jake Posey. Link is in the description. But enough about all that EA College Football content. Let's go. So I'm recording this on Friday, going to be posting this on Saturday. And we know that a couple of days ago, we saw Matt Brown. We saw Chris Vanini from The Athletic. A couple of those guys went down to Florida to check out the game, hands-on, everything like that. I'm sure Mike Straw was connected there as well. But we think about all that, the fact that, again, before the end of this month, we're going to have that full reveal. We've already got a couple of breakdown of the things. We know about Team Builder. There's lots of really cool things. We're really excited. As a matter of fact, my excitement level, somebody had a comment that later was deleted on one of my videos where they said, okay, dude, well, you're not really, it's just everything going to be good. I basically said, I was like, okay, dude, you know, ESPN is not in the game, whatever, quit your whining. You know, mascot mode is not in the game, whatever, quit your whining. I'm just being too much of a cheerleader for this game. So I was thinking about that. It's like, is there any possibility that this game could be or have issues potentially down the road in the future? And I saw something the other day that we need to discuss. So the issue here is within the video game community, within here, is unfortunately different people within the video game community don't see each other as peers. So the FPS guys don't see the RPG guys as peers. The RPG guys don't see the sports guy game guys as peers. They don't see each other as peers like, oh, that's a different, we're not really associated with them. Although that may be true, the people who make the video games and especially the investors in the companies of the people that make the video games are all this they see all of us as the same we are video game purchasers we're the same person i say that to say that what happens with at the top there across some video games is going to come over to ea and especially come over to ea college football we're going to get into that right now so coming over here to act man tv and again this video says ea is getting worse somehow in this video it's, it's a pretty good video about 15 minutes long it brings up two big points that we're going to talk about in this video but again i'm going to include this link in the description those two points are ai and ads in video games so first of all what is ai and first of all they don't even say ai they say generative ai so Generative AI, otherwise known as GAI, is artificial intelligence capable of generating text, images, videos, or other data using generative models, often in response to prompts. Generative AI models learn the patterns and structure of their input training data and then generate new data that has similar characteristics. And again, we mentioned generative AI. We come over here to techradar.com and they have this article that says that generative AI would make would help studios make games faster, says EA CEO. Quote, there is a real hunger amongst our developers to get this as quickly as possible. This was published May 8th earlier this month. The company uses AI for games like EA Sports FC 24. Notice that right there. Continuing on with the article. Electronic Arts CEO Andrew Wilson has said the use of generative AI would make game development much more efficient so the company can make games on a global basis at a faster rate. Speaking during EA's financial results investor call on May 7th, when asked a question during the Q&A if EA plans to introduce AI in game development, he confirmed that the company has already began doing so. Wilson used the EA Sports FC series as an example of that explained that AI allows the development team of making football stadium quicker and create a variety of animations. It says, quote here, as a company, we've been deeply tied to AI since our inception, Wilson said. It has been the very center of all the games we create, replicating human intelligence in the context of a game play experience. But certainly, as we think about the wave of generative AI today and as it merges into artificial general intelligence broadly, we're still very early. But the things I talked about in the conference were really both twofold. One, how do we get more efficient? The stat I've used, we've moved from being able to create stadiums from six months to six weeks. And my expectation is that will continue to shrink over time. The EA boss explained that when it builds games, it has animation to run cycles. And that in FIFA 23, the team had 36 run cycles, which kind of gave you a believability of human performance inside that game. But with EA Sports FC 24, it had run 1,200 run cycles. 
He continues on to see how much he sees AI is going to be involved in this, and he says the discussion continued with Wilson further explaining how EA's game development process could be enhanced by generative AI in the future, saying that based on early assessments, quote, we believe that more than 50% of our development process will be positively affected by AI. So AI is coming for EA College Football in some way in the future. How it happens, I'm not 100% sure. I actually am going to theorize a couple of ways it could happen and a couple of other things with that as well in terms of like positives, negatives, everything related to that. We also want to talk about the ads because a lot of people are worried about the ads. And again, like I said, this is this video is not totally critical, but it is a little cautious because I've been super excited about this game. But again, I'm a little worried about where this goes. We're going to get into my worries here. But first, let's go through some of the positives of what this could mean. So when you think about AI and EA College Football 25, now, is it going to be an EA College Football 25? I don't necessarily. I think the game's basically done at this point. Like I said, those guys are down. The, basically, the, the press is doing their tour. They're not going to have big transitions between now and the end uh, until the game comes out. So the game's basically done. But we think about what would that mean for a positive areas where AI could help out with them. Talking about the development of this game, there's a couple things here. So with this game, the thing about this is every single year with a new freshman class, with transfers here and there, players here who are injured, who are now returning, who are players who unretire, whatever it is, players who weren't in the game and now are. There was about 13,000 players who entered the game. So if you take 12,000 players divided by four, that's about 3,000 players. 3,000 players per year they have to enter into the game. Those player models could be helped out with artificial intelligence. Take somebody's picture, turn it into a you know a video game character, whatever that is. New players every single year. Think about it with the stadiums. Now, people say, oh, it can help out with the stadiums. It might, but the stadiums are already kind of done. Unless somebody builds a new stadium, there's not a real big need for it to come over. But again, on a year-to-year -year basis, the hardest part is going to be entering those players in. AI, take a picture, enter it in there probably going to be used in the future. So that's going to help out with the development, hopefully to concentrate more on other areas. That's the big caveat with this that we don't have answers to as of yet. Also with the crowd, one thing here that the, the, the likeness of Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet and Reese Davis, those guys are signed in. They have their likeness, their name, image, and likeness in the game. Same with the players too. The crowd's not NAL protected. I mean, you can do whatever the heck you want with the crowd. I anticipate that what they're going to do is you see that what happens is, is whenever you see the crowd in the video game, they always have like 10 people in a row and the first and the 10th person are doing the same cheer, but they do that times the whole, you, you can definitely tell that it's AI generated, but it's not necessarily AI generated as well as it could be. So if, again, if you have much more models emulating an actual crowd where you have, you know, 30,000 people in one section of the crowd and they're all doing something completely different as opposed to one every eight people doing something, you know, the same, it would be pretty good in that respect there. Also thinking about game simulations. I think that one thing about the game is you also notice that like there will be a 97 overall Alabama team and you'll simulate 10 games and they'll be six and four. Like that's just not going to happen there. I think they really need to take into account the the tendencies, the the weather, the shortness of the team, uh, the break of the team between games, whether or not it's at home, their history at home, you know, their, their playbook. There's a lot more things I think that need to go into those simulations. And again, the more and more they do this, the more and more accurate it's going to be. Imagine taking all of the history of college football entering into an algorithm and taking the information going forward as to whether or not that's going to replicate it or not. We all know Georgia's going to win double digit games this next year. If they don't, it will be a travesty. But again, using AI, that's going to be more realistic to emulate what's going to happen there in the future. You also think about recruit generation. I think they do a pretty good job of this. Before they didn't do a really good job. All right, right now in EA College or NCA football 2014, I'm recruiting a a junior college offensive lineman who is he's a tackle and he's six feet tall and he's 349 pounds he's a little bowling ball that's not a real player model for a player out there so hopefully they can get better take all the tackles who've ever been recruited all the two three four five one stars whatever they are enter them into a system kind of get a consensus of what a five star looks like what a four star looks like with all the history of 247 sports or rivals or whatever that is to generate those models a lot more accurately Schedule generation, I think they do a pretty good job of that as well. I think it's pretty easy to actually just go and enter all the games because some people will sign games like, oh, yeah, well, these two teams will play each other in 2037, and they can actually just manually enter that in. There's only 12 games a season. That's not going to be too hard to do that there. But I do think that one thing that could help out is AI to determine the road to the college football playoff matchups. So does this person use a full set of plays? Does this person do, you know, uh, different substitutions, different, you know, call smart plays in good situations? Do they convert, convert hard situations? Are they, are they able to come back from down from certain points? Do they learn their tendencies of the player that they're at? 
A lot of things like that you can kind of go through that, again, because what's going to happen is when you play online, there's going to be the ability to kind of slot you into a certain tier. I think AI will do a better job of that as opposed to win-loss, you know, record and, uh, you know, point spread or something like that. I don't know what the system that they use is right now, but AI could help out with that in the future. All right, now a couple areas that I'm a little worried about with AI when it comes to EA College Football. Again, like I said, 25 is probably good. So maybe not necessarily in EA College Football 25 because the game for the most part is set. But in the future, if they start to implement AI in generating a lot of things here, there's a couple things I'm really worried about. The animations, just because, you know, the, the AI model, will you, you can give it a couple pictures of tackles in the game. It might be better. It might be worse. We don't really know the answer to that question. But, I mean, are they going to get, you know, Marcus Lattimore when his knee goes the opposite direction? Willis McGahee when his knee goes the opposite direction? Put that in the game? I, I don't I don't know, but I'm saying the animations is there's a lot of variants in animations, 22 different players, lots of joints, lots of knees. It's just lots of things right there that I think could go wrong at first. They got to be careful with that. I also think also there is the announcer commentary. So one thing would be cool is, you know, if there was like, you know, so as an example, they've got the national broadcast, the regional broadcast, and then the no broadcast. If they had the no broadcast and they had some AI announcer commentators out there that are like just AI generated, it might be kind of goofy, might be interesting. But again, I want to make sure they stay away from that. I think they did a good job. You know, Chris, uh, you know, Chris Fowler and Reese Davis, Kirk Herbstreit, they did a really good job. All those things. Jesse Palmer, David Pollock. I think that they're good for now. We'll see if they, again... Announcer commentary is something that could be repetitive, maybe for simpler games, maybe for high school announcers or something like that for Road to Glory. I don't really know. Plays would be goofy. So plays is going to be, I just, I think that they need to stick with talking to Pro Football Focus. Pro Football Focus is who they're working with on making sure the playbooks are representative for what they do. Hopefully they stick with that, a little bit more man touch with that as opposed to the AI touch because an AI generated play, I can't even imagine what that would look like. I also want to make sure too that if they had Road to Glory storylines, so Superstar mode, you know, on on Madden has a, a, a storyline. If they were to like AI generate something like that, it could get a bit goofy there. But for the most part, the game it's it's kind of it's not as many it's not as easy to necessarily put it in there AI into the game. But for very very repetitive things, it's going to help out from the developmental process. These four areas though, if they were to put it into that, I'm not really sure if I would like that. All right, now talking about advertisements, so. I'm going to let you guys know about this. Unfortunately, EA is a company and they're trying to make money. Now, EA has a low, let's just say a suspect approval rating out there right now. They make some good games, but there's some certain aspects of it that are, you know, let's just say a bit uh, scrutinized is what we're going to say there. So with that, unfortunately, we know that they're trying to make money as, pos as much as possible in every area that they can. That's the reason why Ultimate Team has kind of been come under fire by a lot of NCAA players who are coming over to EA College Football. They're like, is this going to turn into, you know, uh, NCAA Ultimate Team, College Football Ultimate Team, Kafut Nut, whatever it's called. Again, is that going to take over? Or is the fact that they're going to have advertisements in this game going to reduce the need for that? Or are they just going to do both and just try and push as much money milking out of the customers as possible? Here's what I think is going to happen here. Maybe not now, but in the future, there's going to be advertisements in EA College Football franchise at some point. I don't think... They're going to be during the game, per se, like over the screen. I think what it'll be like is almost like when Dr. Pepper, you know, uh, sponsored college football or something like that. It'll be like during loading screens, banners on the side of the screens, ETC. You'll know what they're talking about. Also, with those advertisements, what they're going to be, they're not going to advertise for something crazy. They're not going to advertise for a membership to Costco. It's going to be brand recognition advertisements. Hey, here's Coca-Cola. Here's Reese's. Here's Pepsi. Here's Pizza. Here's Pop-Tarts. You know what they're, they know what they are, but they spend a certain amount of advertising just to make sure they're always at the top of your mind. Like I said, they're not going to advertise a sham wow. If they're not going to be like, oh, call, call in the next 20 minutes and get this. They're not going to do an advertisement like that. They're probably just going to be those brand recognition things. A little annoying, but hopefully it reduces the requirement of having Ultimate Team so this game can continue to make money for EA and make quality product for us. Now, Ackman had some comments there about the EA game ads that I was a little bit, well, I didn't really, I disagreed with them. He says right here, they've already done this in uh, FIFA and Madden to my knowledge, but a lot of people who play those games don't give a crap about if those games are good or pro-consumer or not, which, you know what, fair play to you. But that type of crap is not going to fly with Battlefield, meaning ads in the games, EA, you know, sports game players. Again, you see the discrepancy there between, oh, well, you know, the FPS guys and the sports guys. Even Ackman kind of recognizes that himself. Well, I'm letting you know right now that Ackman is kind of incorrect in that because the Madden community has already kind of spoken about the quality of the game. 
All you got to do is just Google Madden decline and it will literally be article after video after video after video after article after video about the decline of Madden from multiple different wings. As a matter of fact, if you come over here to VGCharts.com and you come over here and you sort out the critic score for all of the Madden games that have ever been made based off of system, based off of year, everything like that, you'll be able to see that in the, the top 10 highest rated Madden games, there's only one of them that was made in the 20 teens. That was Madden 18 and 2017 here. And the in the 2020s, the highest rated game is all the way down here, number 47, Madden 23 on Xbox that was released in 2022. So if the narrative is that EA Sports players don't really care if there's ads in the game because they don't really care about the quality of the game, unfortunately, these are hurting Madden and EA's reputation right now. So I've been a big-time fanboy for EA College Football. I, I got NCAA football right over there. I absolutely love the game. I can't wait for this game to come out. However, those areas that I'm most worried about, generative AI is going to come, maybe not in NCAA football or EA College Football 25, but the next ones it will. Where it goes, I'm not really sure. Hopefully it stays in areas that are mostly repetitive and stays away from the high-quality content that we want to make sure has that hands-on person touch. Also probably going to get ads in the game too at some point. Am I thrilled about it? No. Is going to be the end of the world? Probably not either. All right, guys. You guys get in the comments. What do you think about that? Again, are you more worried about generative AI? Are you going to be annoyed at the ads? Like I said, the ads, maybe not right now. At some point, they're probably going to be implemented into the game. Could be an update throughout the year. We don't really know the answer to that question. If it reduces the requirement of getting ultimate team purchases, I might be for it. But again, EA is going to EA. Hopefully, they again, EA, please help us out. Okay. Keep your eyes on Madden. Let the, let the EA college football guys do their thing over here. Let them do it. Let it be their own entity. But again, hopefully everything like that works out in the end. But you guys let me know what you guys are worried about, what you like, what you don't like, all that stuff in the comments. Also, by the way, if you stayed over at the end, hit that red subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. I'm going to make quality content. Remember, also, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. I really appreciate it. It's it for me, guys. I'll see you guys later. I am out.